Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, he kept seeing a young girl in an oversized hat in his doorway at night. Years later, he found out he wasn't the only one who saw her. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. If you have a real ghost story, you could share it with us. We'll share it with the world. 855-853-4802. Or if you'd rather write it in, go to realghoststoriesonline.com. You can also become a premium subscriber. There's no commercials. You get all the advanced episodes. You get access to the entire archive, which is huge. You can sign up today on Apple Podcasts. Try it three days free. You can also sign up through patreon.com slash stories or at ghostpodcast.com. I'm Carol Hughes and Kathy Gordon's here today. What's up, I am. Kathy? So how's it going? It's going pretty good. Today, Good. can't complain. Good. Well, I talked to my um, traveling Therapist. daughter, oh, and yeah. she's in Montenegro. And it is kind of interesting because I will say, so what are you guys doing? Like, what are what are you seeing? What's going on? And it seems to be a lot of this, like, old Cold, cold War stuff. Yeah. And she said, like, today they went and looked at the, they had kind of carved out these like tunnels for submarines and, you know, had them and all these tunnels underneath this mountain and everything. And so she said they drive up this mountain to go to it and then they go down and then it turns into this gravel dirt road and then they park and they walk on down farther. And then they finally get down to where they get to these places that they can go in. And she said it was just creepy as hell. Oh, and it sounds like it'd be super dark. Yeah, and it was like right in the mouth of the tunnel, you know, it's like got water, right? And kind of like walk, you know, walk paths on either side. They're built so that you can walk along them, but the big submarines would fit in there. And then they would camouflage the front of these openings in this mountain or cliff uh, with, you know, grasses or whatever, so that you couldn't really tell that they were there. Yeah. But the, these tunnels go way, way back far in there. And she said, oh, it was creepy. So I thought it was kind of fascinating that the tourist stuff was Cold War stuff that you know, they've been seeing. I went to a similar thing in Dover, England, and those white cliffs of Dover, inside mm-hmm. of I've those are all these tunnels that they used in World War II. Mm-hmm. And so it's just tunnel, 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 and you go forever and there's offices and stuff, but as you go, the lights come on, and they're mm-hmm. like, they made this so clear, like, you have got to stay with the group. If you get lost in here, you're mm-hmm. lost in here. That's like, like the catacombs in Rome. Yeah. I don't know that I've ever been to a more scary haunted place in my life than the catacombs, where they used to bury people in these think. underground you know, I didn't burial go chambers. There, I don't think. Ooh, it's really scary. And they too said, stay with us because these go on all over the place under the city. And they would just have these little alcoves that were cut out that bodies would fit in. Some of them were small for babies or children, and others were bigger, you know. The bodies aren't there anymore. They don't that at least where we were, we didn't weren't seeing, you know, actual human remains, but Boy, how do you, I tell you, you could feel the spirits all around you. Ooh. Why yeah. didn't I go? I've been to Rome three times. Like I don't know. Like, I guess I just didn't take you to the catacombs last time we were there. But I don't, I don't remember doing scary that. scary stuff. Yeah. It, it, it seems like something I would remember. You would. <laughs> you would not so. forget that. <laughs> I would hope not. But, you know, I forget all kinds of shit. <laughs> it's Tony Bruschi. Back to the conversation in just a second. If you want to get started on your resolution for the new year, and if it involves eating better, mm-hmm, Factor has got you covered. They're ready to eat meal deliveries. Take the stress out of meal planning. Set up for success in the new year. Skip the grocery stores, the prep work, the cooking fatigue. Instead, get chef created, dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door with over 35 meals to choose from every single week, including options like keto, calorie smart, vegan, plus veggie, and more. Plus over 55 weekly add-ons, you'll have a ton of nutritious and flavorful options to kick start your resolutions. Forget those frantic lunch preps and rush dinners. Factors two-minute meals are your secret weapon for the new year. Fuel up with restaurant-quality meals delivered right to your 
door. You can skip that overpriced takeout trap. Factor is cheaper and way more delicious than takeout. Trust me, it is. You are not going to regret this decision. Not only does Factor offer fast, simple solutions when I'm way too busy to cook, they also help me stay on my goals, offering, like we said, protein plus, keto, whatever way you eat, Factor has got you covered. Head to factormeals.com slash ghost50 and use code ghost50 to get 50% off. That's code ghost50 at factormeals.com slash ghost50 and get 50% off. Now back to the conversation. So here's our story. Our first story. It says I was raised by a single father Growing up, my childhood was amazing. My father took us on so many fun little vacations. So growing up, I never realized that we didn't have much money. We lived in various subsidized departments for most of my very young years. And finally, when I was 10, my dad saved up enough to buy us a small Cape Cod style house in Amherst, Massachusetts. Oh, that sounds lovely. Mm -hmm. Well, or was it? So it says this house was divided into three sections and two apartments. We lived in the bottom apartment. It was around 100 years old. The upper apartment was newer, around 50 years old. And the basement and foundation, I'm told, was around 150 years old. Anyways, we lived in that house for three years. From my my recollection, nothing much happened initially. And throughout my stay there... I developed many fond memories and forged some amazing friendships with the children in the neighborhood. However, around six months into living there, things got pretty creepy. It started with hearing footsteps from the apartment above. This was weird because when it started, the upstairs apartment was vacant. I would also hear rustling around in the kitchen and things of that nature. It would all happen at night. I would tell my father about these sounds, but he seemed to think nothing of it and always tried to help me get back to sleep. At some point, I began to wake up in the middle of the night, and on several occasions, she appeared. She was a little girl dressed in white, outdated clothing, and she was always wearing this oversized-looking hat. That was her most distinctive characteristic. She never said anything, but she would stare at me. She wasn't in the shadows either, always in my doorway. This continued off and on until we left that house in 2003. I never told anybody about this girl. I was always afraid that if I talked about her, it would become worse. Because when I went to bed, I was all alone. I get that, you know, especially as a kid, you Mm -hmm. can tell yourself all kinds of things. And it's like, oh, I'm seeing this. And if I talk about it, it's going to be more real. Mm-hmm. No one mm-hmm. will believe me. You know, as a kid, you don't want people to think there's something wrong with you. So you just hold it in. You don't tell people that, you know, you've experienced this or that. Because yeah. you don't want people to think there's something wrong. And if you get a feeling and, and it's scaring you, you could feel like, man, if I talk about it, it gets worse. Right. So then it says, fast forward to 2020. We've moved twice. My father has remarried and we are now living in the house my dad and his current wife still live in. I asked him to tell me the truth. Did he experience anything at that house? He admitted that he had. It started with him waking up in the middle of the night and seeing a black smoke-like substance float above his bed and throughout his bedroom. Then he began to wake up several times and would see three distinct figures. They were three females, one, a sad-looking 20-something-year-old woman, the other, an older lady, he described her as always looking angry with her arms crossed, and the other little girl with an oversized hat. I had never told him about her. There's a period in between each one of those. I had Mm. never told him about her. He says that initially the figures would appear at the foot of his bed, They would always be staring at him, never saying a word. Then they would appear closer until eventually they would be standing right next to him. Yikes. Mm. The old lady was always crossing her arms and the black smoke was always there. Every time they would appear. He said that once we moved, they would no longer appear, but the black smoke still appeared above his wall on the ceiling. 
Fast forward once more, my uncle and his girlfriend, by chance, rented that same house around two years ago. My uncle, a physician's assistant, was a major skeptic. It started with his girlfriend hearing footsteps, then he began to hear footsteps. Then they both began to hear undiscernible voices. Finally, my uncle was able to catch something, a voice on a camera. It was loud but difficult to make out. This is my story about the house I grew up in. It has turned both my father and uncle into believers. I'm curious what you think about this. I have more stories to tell, including one that has to do with a very frightening experience with a Ouija board. Keep doing what you do. That's from Chris. Yeah, it's a super haunted house. Super haunted house. First thing I want to do, though, is give a good shout out to a single dad raising. It, it sounds like there was just one child in the family, but, you know, but making life feel good, even when they didn't have a lot. So, yeah. you know, the, sometimes life gets really hard and it's hard to try to keep your spirits up. But it sounds like he did a wonderful job. So I want to give a shout out to we don't often get to hear those great stories and let's give a shout out to the dad on this one but with that said the little girl with the oversized hat and that chris had never told their dad about this and so how would the dad just come up with that description yeah and you it know. feels to me that the three are connected but i wonder if the mm -hmm. little girl would because he was young and i don't know if chris is a guy or girl actually um yeah in my head i, I was thinking either. a boy but i don't know but the the little ghost girl would be attracted to the child mm -hmm. like i could see how she would go to chris's room and watch him but it's just so weird like to see what looks like it could the 20 something year old could be the mom of the little girl and then a grandma they could all be related. Right. Or are we seeing the same they... person in various phases of their life? Oh, that's another idea. But it's so creepy that they would just move and be right next to him. Yeah. I don't want that to ever happen to me. No, no. And what and do they we've want? Got the, the black smoke. But did I misunderstand this, or did the black smoke follow them? It said it followed him, that they, okay. um, he said once we moved, they would no longer okay. appear, but the black smoke still appeared above his wall on the ceiling. Okay, that then that is the case. Interesting. I don't know that I like that. Well, Dad did a good job of trying to keep, you know, his wits about him and keep the the child calm you know if i know it's okay everything's fine and you know let me comfort you put you back to sleep and then he goes back to bed and then this kind of stuff is happening to him although it's nice That's that really they talked as an adult and as when he was an adult chris or she mm -hmm. um but i like that idea because we talk about that frequently it's like could you still reach out to these people who lived in that house with you and find out, did anything happen to anybody else? Right. It's kind of a good conversation to have. Yeah. And, it, you know, if it did, it kind of validates you a little bit to that. No, you weren't, you know, just making something up or seeing things. This really was true, mm -hmm. especially since the dad described the little girl Yeah, that way. Yeah, they... Both definitely saw the same little girl. Mm -hmm. Well, here's another story. It says, okay. July 2017, my boyfriend and I, along with our two labs, rented a home in Waldport, Oregon for a week vacation to celebrate both of our birthdays and our two-year anniversary. Waldport is a few miles south of Newport and is not touristy like Newport at all. It actually reminded me of a very small retirement community. My boyfriend's best friend and his wife drove from Salem to visit us for a couple of days. Now, I believe in spirits, ghosts, whatever one may call them, but I can say that I myself have never experienced or seen anything before this. I used to say that it's because whatever higher power you believe in knows that I wouldn't be able to handle it 
and has guarded me from any experience. I get that. One night, while everyone was sleeping, our dogs were in the room. Our friends were in the room to the left of us and the bathroom to the right of us, the hallway in front of our door and the kitchen straight ahead from there. Our door was closed due to not wanting our dogs to get out and wake our friends up. I suddenly woke up felt kind of dazed and looked towards the door. At that time, the door opened up enough for me to see a shadow or outline of somebody looking into our room. I couldn't see a face, just a black shadow. I instantly became so scared that I started to cry. I could see the shadow then leave the doorway. I woke up my boyfriend. This That's a little plot twist because normally the girl turns to wake up with a boyfriend and the boyfriend doesn't wake up. But he did. Right. Okay, good, good. Because it's always like, what is up with these boyfriends who sleep through this shit? But hers woke right? up. Said, I woke up my boyfriend and told him that somebody was looking in the room. He tried to reassure me that it wasn't anything. He didn't go investigate. I think he should have gotten up. Mm-hmm. I finally was able to fall asleep, but was creeped out the rest of the time in the house. Not because I had experienced anything else, but due to me knowing something was there. We asked our friends if either one of them got up during the night, and they said no. My dogs didn't hear anything or react at all. I know what I saw and the instant fear and goosebumps I felt. Fast forward a year or so later at my house, I saw a black outline slash shadow again out of the corner of my eye. I passed the side where I was standing and walked towards the hallway. I was so freaked out again. On a side note, about four years before we moved into our house, my three boys and I lived in an apartment for about 10 years. My youngest, who was home by himself after school, was sitting in his room with our then puppy, who I still have, with his bedroom door closed, playing video games. He called me frantically and said somebody was in the hallway. He could see the shadow under his door between the light on both sides of the shadow. I called his two older brothers to get home right away and sent since they were closer than I at that time to go check on him. They got there, they didn't find anything, and he swears to this day there was something there. My mom came to visit us from Ohio one year at that apartment and swears there was somebody there when she was alone too. There's one other occasion living in my grandmother's home where my two older boys, who were under the age of 10, and my niece, who was a few years older, were playing together. She had a family room area that was in the back of the house off the dining room where the boys and I would watch TV or they would play. The sliding door led to the backyard. They swear to this day, over 10 years later, that there was something that was in the family room watching them. I'm really not sure what to make of all of this. All I know is I don't ever want to see anything ever again. That's from Gina. I can appreciate that. Yeah, most definitely. It's interesting. Okay, so the question is, there's different locations here. But it all seems like the same sort of thing. Uh-huh. Like the shadow, the room, the outside the door. Uh-huh. Walking by. So, so would that you begs s- the question, does it go with her? Or the whole family? Because was the whole family at... um in Waldport? No, it was just her and her boyfriend. Boyfriend, right? And the so, dogs. But the dogs didn't react to that. So she's there with yeah. the, and the dogs didn't react at all, which that is kind of weird. Mm-hmm, that's unusual. And I could almost say that maybe that was some kind of weird dream, because we talk about that all the time, where you see something or you know something's standing there and it's mm-hmm. that real and that terrifying, but yet it's not. And you're kind of in this weird dream state. Or could it be like a shadow cast because, you know, the wind blew branches, you know, in front of a window and shadows, you know, came down. Is there a shadow situation going on that that could be explained, I guess, is my question. And I think if it... for if it happened one time, like just at the the home they rented, mm-hmm. so maybe you could go, okay, maybe it was this, this, or that. And then, but it happened to you again, and it happened to your son, and it happened mm-hmm. to everybody. Your mom. Yeah. 
The kids are all like, there's somebody watching us in the family room. So it almost seems like it's something that's kind of following the family. Yeah. And her, obviously. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it know. does, doesn't it? That, you that, at least that's what it seems it. like yeah. to me. You could get that it. there's something going with them. Like, I, you know, me, we always tease that, you know, I, I can move wherever I want, but there's going to be something here. Mm -hmm. Some places more than others, because some places already have something, but I, it always seems like I bring something with me. So it could be that. But, you know, for it to just happen once, I think you could debunk it and explain it away as I was just seeing things. And mm -hmm. but when it happens mm -hmm. repeatedly to different people in your family, that's hard to do. Yeah. And, and the child was genuinely scared when he called yeah. and she, you know, get the older boys back home quicker. You know, he was scared. I don't know. I don't know what you do. Like. Do you have a conversation? It's like, please stop. Well, You're terrified my family. You know, I know that might sound stupid, but I do think there's something to be said for trying to talk to him. You've got to back off or whatever, whatever approach you want. But I don't know that that's a bad idea. But especially if you don't ever want to see anything again. <laughs> time to put your damn foot down. Like, stop it. Stop scaring my children. Well, if you have a real ghost story, we want to hear about it. Call in anytime. It's 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You could get an ad-free version of the show. You'll also get advanced episodes, access to the archive if you become a premium subscriber. Do that through Apple Podcasts. You can also sign up through patreon.com slash realghoststories or at ghostpodcast.com. For all of us here at Real Ghost Stories Online, thanks for listening.